Well, it is time for July, so let me show you what my setup looks like. It is about mid-year, and I am in my second month of using the Passion Planner Journal. This is the B5 size, so a little bit bigger than the usual A5 that I use, but I've been liking it so far. Just trying to experiment with the size of the space. And I was thinking about what I was going to do for this month and thought I wanted something simple. I wanted something um, to continue to tune into what I need in this time. There's been so much transition in my life. I can't even say that right now I've got a hang of my schedule or my rhythm. And so really thinking about going back through June and seeing what it is that I used or didn't use, uh, which I recommend for anybody. So as I flipped through, this is how my... June has been going so far. The second half has been rough. <laughs> uh, wellness, you can see that my sleep has gone way towards the two o'clock in the morning, which is not great. But I'm going to be looking through here and checking what kinds of things are not happening, what kinds of things I haven't spent a lot of time on, and incorporating some of those into this month. A lot going on. Okay. So now we are in July. And here's what my setup looks like. So simple, black and white, and uh, some gold. I used one of my favorite gold pens, which is a Pen Touch. It is definitely not like a cheap pen, but I love the way the gold looks. And then I really just filled in the rest of it with some gray and black Tombow markers. Just kept it pretty simple. All right, so I kept the July overview for the month. I added back this little mini calendar because there's a lot of things that I'm doing this month that would kind of affect my schedule. So I'm watching a lot of dogs this month. Honestly, I don't know what it is, but all, all the people that I know are getting dogs. Is that something that you're experiencing? Because I'm just, I mean, I love it because I'm a dog aunt, but like, a little confused. So I'm watching a couple dogs this month and I'm marking that down because it does affect how I plan for the week. And I'm trying something different here where I have migrated, which is just to separate the tasks that I've brought with me from the months before and then the months tasks that I'm planning intently on this side or I think of throughout the month and throw them in here. I wonder if I were to distinguish between like what is dedicated to this month and what I brought over that I would have a little bit of a reminder of like, oh, maybe I should like prioritize doing some of those things that keep kicking down the road. On this side is my focus, which is an overview of the month. I'm going to put some intentions and goals in here, and then these are different project areas of my life. July is really, really important in my work, and then being able to take advantage of what the summer brings. Uh, so wanting to take stock of what is coming and planning ahead for that month. And I always leave one blank because I never know what I'm going to run into and want to leave room for to, for myself to grow. I, so I kept a lot of the logs from the last month. I didn't obviously fill out all of them to the end, but I think what is really interesting is trying to come back at it and what that tells me about the second half of June, which is that it's been chaotic. And what does that mean? And how do I want to change that for July so that I have fewer of those kind of chaotic days where I just run out of time or motivation to fill out the log? So this month I've got it back in here. Again, what is so interesting that I've learned about the bullet journal system and the practice is that this log usually gets told as an events log, like here's what I'm doing that day. And over time, Ryder has evolved that approach. Since we all probably use digital calendars at this point, it is helpful to use that for the task that it's designed for. So I keep all my events in Google Calendar, but then what Ryder does now is he writes down like, the important thing that happened that day, whether it's a realization or a plan or something important, whatever it is goes into the log. And then he gets to look at it at the end of the month and see what is helpful, what is not helpful, where he wants to spend more time or less time. So I find that to be a really cool approach. Okay, then I've got my sleep and my health. I'm gonna add in what the, my star day method is gonna look like down here from a couple habits, habits that I suck at, I know. <laughs> and then this is my weekly overview. 
Um, I obviously still do a weekly overview in like a weekly calendar, but um, this allows me to focus on goals. And Karen had asked in my last video about the differences between what I put here and what I put here. And for goals, these are the things that I, I wanna try to do to push myself forward in these particular categories. And to do is much more just like the tasks. So like maybe a financial goal would be something like a low spend week or I only have one unplanned expense. But then for like my me category, I might have like, you know, cash that check from so-and-so, which is just much more of like a daily maintenance thing versus uh, something that I'm pushing myself toward. So I've got these vertically this time. I used to do like horizontal like this. So I'm just trying out this vertical and seeing how I like that. And again, I've got a blank one just in case something comes up and I wanna have space for it. My dailies I had been doing as like a two column thing, use as much as you want or need. What I'm trying is to get my energy back on track. My sleep schedule has been so weird the last two weeks and um, I just want to retrack some of my energy so I'm going to be doing this half doing today which is what I've done before looking at the schedule of the day tracking what my mood was like at that point my energy level what uh, I'm feeling in that moment and using the super light Tombow this is the N95 to chart my energy along the day and then be able to have like kind of a bar chart in the background of whatever I'm writing. I'm experimenting with either tracking energy or tracking tasks. So sometimes it's helpful just to plan out some of the, the time blocking stuff. So I might do that here. Uh, we'll see what evolves. But then I'm obviously still doing my to-do list on the right hand side. We'll see how I like this and um, how it serves the purpose, which is to track how I'm feeling, what, I'm, what the energy spikes are in my day, where the dips are especially as we head toward this like weird transition time where I'm kind of going into the office and working at home and also just for the first month like not going anywhere uh, now that I'm in this house trying to get back into my workout routines and stuff like that. That is what I've got so far. I'm probably going to go back into doing weekly themes but I do like how simple this is. Um, when you make tweaks, I would love to know what you're thinking about and what you're tracking this summer. So that is my setup. I love doing stuff that is, you know, simple, pretty, productive, all at once. I don't believe that it's, you know, super, super minimal or super, super artistic. We can always do something in between. Let me know in the comments below what you think or something that has helped you in your next month's vlog. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe, like, share, comment, whatever. I just hope that you enjoy it. I will see you in my next video. Bye.